Take New York City and replace it with a sizable airport that is 70 meters above Midtown Manhattan. Even though it's obvious that this is a foolish notion, there was a real mega project proposal for this in the 1940s. We'll examine fantastic mega project concepts that were never realized in the film we're watching today. Some of these seemed like crazy notions that were impractical, while others were constrained by political and financial factors. Which of the aforementioned initiatives would you like to see come to pass? Let us know in the comments section below. Let's begin with the ideal airport overlooking New York, dubbed as New York's Dream Airport. When people think of New York, they typically visualize its iconic skyline and cultural sites. However, a crazy proposal that was suggested in the 1940s and would have drastically altered Midtown Manhattan may have made this image seem entirely different today. William Zeckendorf, one of New York's most prominent real estate developers, offered the proposal for a rooftop airport in midtown Manhattan along the Hudson River in 1946. The massive edifice dubbed New York City's Dream Airport would cover 144 Manhattan blocks and include a deck that was 70 meters high and about the size of Central Park. Under the deck, a series of 10-story buildings were planned for use as waiting rooms, ticket booths, and small businesses. The airport would accommodate more than just air travel. The proposals featured roads and railroads underneath a platform, as well as docks for ships from the Hudson River. It was anticipated to cost $3 billion at the time, making it the most expensive airport construction endeavor ever. The goal of this design was primarily to shorten the distance traveled. A Midtown Airport would have eliminated the need for travelers to drive to Newark, LaGuardia, or JFK. If the airport had been built, it would have changed New York for the better. In the 1940s, the city already struggled with traffic congestion and getting to these transit points was frequently challenging because of all of its major airports were located outside of Manhattan. Without this region, some of the skyscrapers that can be seen today, like the Hudson Yards, wouldn't be there. Additionally, the neighborhood would have been created very differently. Even if it does seem absurd now, there are clear reasons why this strategy didn't work out. Amidst the busiest metropolis in the world, an airport would be a nightmare for the locals. Since this airport was built to handle 68 flights per hour, citizens would literally have to put up with an airplane noise 24 hours a day. Additionally, New York's traffic was already a huge issue and the influx of travelers to Midtown for their flights would only make matters worse for the city's planners. But even if they received approval, there would be significant engineering difficulties. Also, it would likely be the biggest and trickiest mega project in the history of New York to acquire the necessary property, demolish the existing buildings within a 144 block radius, and then reconstruct the entire area with an airport on top. Considering the neighboring skyscrapers and population, it is clear that creating an airport 70 meters above New York was just not going to be feasible. So despite the excitement surrounding this exceptional airport, only newspapers reported on the grandiose ambitions. Number 5. The Most Famous Hotel in the World, Hotel Atrashian Staying in New York, we examine another outstanding design from the early 1900s. The city was experiencing a skyscraper boom at the time. The Singer Building, which first surpassed a height of 150 meters in 1908, was followed by enormous structures like the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building. The famed Spanish architect Antoni Gaudi demonstrated a completely distinct architectural style with attention to detail and curved curves on the other side of the Atlantic. His renowned designs for structures like Casa Mila and Casa Batlo which were inspired by an appreciation of Catalan culture and environment were unheard of in New York. Two businessmen who were awestruck by Gaudi's brilliance traveled to Barcelona in 1908 to persuade him to design a masterpiece for New York. Gaudi expressed interest and suggested building an opulent hotel that would rise 360 meters into the air. Alabaster, glass, and tiles would shine on the buildings outside, and it would have dining establishments, theaters, music halls, and an exhibition theater within a height of more than 100 meters. Plans for a structure that tall were unheard of and daunting at the time. Gaudi was renowned for doing the impossible, though. 
His ambitions never materialized in the end. The Sagrada Familia, Barcelona's most well-known structure, was the focus of Gaudi's life work in the years that followed. Even though the Hotel Atrashian was still in its infancy, moving to New York would require Gaudi to abandon the Sagrada Familia, a project he would devote the remaining 43 years of his life to finishing. Though eventually shelved, the initiative was never forgotten. When some Spanish architects submitted their concept for the new World Trade Center design competition, it was revived once more in 2003. Even though Gaudi's original sketches are still in existence today, it doesn't appear that the project will ever be completed. But the Hotel Atrashian would undoubtedly rank among the most fascinating structures in the world if it were still standing in Manhattan today. Number 4. The Mile High Skyscraper in Illinois The skyscraper is widely regarded as having originated in Chicago, and according to a well-known proposal, it might have been the clear frontrunner in the race to construct the world's highest tower. Frank Lloyd Wright, a famous architect, unveiled his design for the Illinois, a mile-high skyscraper in 1956. The proposal was absurd because the Empire State Building, which stood less than one-fourth as tall as the Illinois, was the highest structure in the world at the time. Lloyd Wright opposed spherical cities and wished to construct something that would lift cities skyward while conserving ground area. His 8-meter tall Illinois copy has 528 stories, atomic elevators, parking for 15,000 cars, and space for 100 helicopters. Wright claimed that it could house all government offices and do away with the need for more skyscrapers to keep springing up all around Chicago because it was a complete city unto itself. Wright's suggestion was excellent, but at the moment it was just not feasible. The Burj Khalifa is currently the highest structure in the world even though it isn't anywhere close to the Illinois' proposed height. Only a few of Wright's designs and models still exist because it was never thought to be possible to realize his vision. Number 3. The Chicago Spire, America's Highest Failed Skyscraper we remain in Chicago and visit a far more accurate skyscraper that was even being built. The Chicago Spire was to become the tallest structure in the nation and would have maintained that record until almost 50 years after Wright's suggestion. Another well-known Spanish architect, Santiago Calatrava, who was also creating the World Trade Center transportation hub and Sweden's turning torso, was responsible for its design. The Shellbourne Corporation's Garrett Keller decided to move forward with the construction of the Spire after it was first suggested in 2005. The 610-meter-tall tower would have been curved and thin, rising into the Chicago skyline. Construction on this facility began in 2007 with huge anticipation. The tower's foundations had to be extremely deep due to its narrow construction. Therefore, 22 meters of the ground were excavated, but as soon as the groundwork was done, the development stopped. The Great Recession was a major factor in the Chicago Spire's cancellation as it was with many other mid-2000s projects. Since the Anglo-Irish Bank, the project's primary backer, was in financial trouble, there was automatically no investment to forward development. This sparked a series of lawsuits filed by various parties. Additionally, they had to halt development due to the project developer's persistent financial issues. Only the Spire's base had been built by that point. Because of a bankruptcy reorganization strategy that Shellbourne Corporation executed in 2013, the spectacular project that was intended to tower over Chicago is now just a hole in the ground. Related Midwest took over the location three years later, and in 2020, the Chicago City Council authorized an upgraded design for the 400 Lakeshore Drive after putting out a number of new ideas. This idea consists of two towers that resemble staircases and are 267 and 233 meters tall, respectively. There is hope that the property won't just stay a hole in the ground forever because the corporation says that work will start this year. At number 2 is Hitler's plan to establish the biggest dome on Earth. Hitler's horrific, brutal deeds came to an end with the defeat of Nazi Germany. Additionally, it signaled the completion of some of its absurdly large architectural projects. One of these was Germania's Great Hall, the city's primary structure and intended capital. Berlin was stated to serve as the nation's capital of the new continent known as Germania. Hitler envisioned reorganizing Berlin along an east-west axis and a central boulevard running 5 kilometers from north to south. The Great Hall was meant to be located at the northernmost terminus of this new central axis. 
Hitler created the sketches for this enormous dome-shaped building. He had been to the Pantheon in Rome in the 1920s, and he intended to construct something even more magnificent and much larger. The dome would be the most noticeable structure on the continent, rising to a height of 290 meters and being estimated to be 250 meters wide. The enormous interior hall could have accommodated 150,000 people at once, and it was so large that it would have been 17 times larger than St. Peter's Basilica. Hitler intended to keep his empire going by creating absurdly large structures. As per historian Wolfgang Bentz, the purpose of the Great Hall was to uphold the rules of government. He claimed that this kind of building was intended to enslave, overwhelm, and captivate people. Almost little from the Germania blueprints was ever really erected, with the exception of a few shell buildings. The defeat in 1945 ultimately brought the Great Hall and other ambitions to an end, and they are a reflection of the all-pervasive, brutal ideas and alluring grandiosity of Nazi Germany. And before we hop on to the number one mega project that was never built, please hit that like button if you find value in this video so far. Number 1. The Giza Pyramid Sphere Shape Design we travel further back in time to France's 18th century for our final major undertaking. According to reports, Sir Isaac Newton, one of the most significant scientists in history, was honored with this endeavor. Etienne-Louis Boulet, a French architect, designed this 150-meter-tall cenotaph in his honor, which would be even taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. The cenotaph was intended to serve as a tribute to Sir Isaac Newton, who was buried in London's Westminster Abbey, while the Great Pyramid served as the final resting place of Egyptian Emperor Khufu. Boulet sought to construct the first dome planetarium in the world as a tribute to Newton's contributions to science. In order to reflect the locations of the planets and constellations, Boulet drilled several tiny holes in the interior of his spherical structure. The structure would be illuminated by a magnificent spherical lamp that would serve as the sun and a cosmos made possible by the placement of holes on the surface at night. His plan, like the others in this film, was not just feasible at the time. Boulet would have known that because he considered architecture to be more of a science of ideas and imaginations than merely a science of constructing. The cenotaph thus remained a fantastic idea that was never put into reality. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed this content and you're wanting for more, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you at the next one.